Hey, Flip Geometry, how are you doing? We're going to dive into section 6.5 today. We're looking at trapezoids and kites. Let's go fly a kite. That's way too old for you, but it was a great movie if you know what that reference is. Go look it up. It's fun. Okay, so the first theorem that we're going to deal with in this section is about trapezoids and base angles. So um, we have here a trapezoid that is marked for us as isosceles. The two legs of this trapezoid are congruent. And so, therefore, it's an isosceles trapezoid. And this first theorem says that the base angles of an isosceles tra trapezoid are congruent. So here we have a, a base angle here and a base angle here. And it, just like in a triangle, it's the angles where the base attaches to a leg. And if it's an isosceles tri a trapezoid, just like it's an isosceles triangle, then the base angles are congruent. And you can think of this as if you were to continue these legs, if you were to keep drawing that line up, you would get a isosceles triangle. It's like an isosceles triangle that's been decapitated. Um, and the, but that wouldn't affect the base angles. And so the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent, just like the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. And as this publisher has done in the last couple of lectures, you can back through this theorem, but rather than writing it as one theorem and just saying, hey, feel free to back through it, they write up a whole nother theorem uh, to let you use that logic backwards. So. If it's an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are congruent. And if the base angles are congruent, then the trapezoid is isosceles. It's the same logic, just know it once and be able to use it in either direction, okay? Same idea here. Let's move on to another idea about trapezoid. One other interesting tidbit about isosceles trapezoids is that the diagonals are congruent. So I can demonstrate this to you semi-quickly here. So this angle, this base angle, has to be the same as this base angle if this is an isosceles trapezoid, okay? Uh, AD here is itself, and so by reflexive property, we can use that in two different triangles. Now I can tell you as well that AB is congruent to DC because by definition of an isosceles trapezoid, those two legs are congruent. So here I have side angle side and side angle side. So these two triangles here, ABD and DCA, those two triangles are congruent. Therefore, the diagonals are congruent on that trapezoid because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. There you go. You have a good time with that. Um, that is another little cute fact about trapezoids that you will be using in proofs. All right, let's do some more work with isosceles trapezoids. A, B, C, D here is given to me as an isosceles trapezoid, and in the diagram, I know that this is 30 degrees. In the text, I'm told that this is 125, and I'm given an algebraic definition for the length of the two diagonals. Now they're asking, what's bad? Well, B, A, D here, um, this angle, I'm going to tell you, is congruent to this angle here. So the answer is 125, but let me prove that to you real quick. Let's look at two triangles that are inside this trapezoid. Let's look at triangle BAD and let's look at triangle ABC. Uh, it's an isosceles trapezoid. So by definition, that means that these two legs are congruent. I have a side. AB is in both triangles. I have another side. And uh, the two diagonals are congruent because it's an isosceles trapezoid, which is always true of isosceles trapezoids. So I have two congruent triangles by side, 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 which means that this angle here and this angle here have to be congruent because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Another way that you could look at that is to say, well, DC and AB are parallel, definition of a trapezoid. This line cuts them, uh, and so it's a line cutting uh, two parallel lines, so the consecutive angles of those have to be supplementary. If I know that the base angles on a trapezoid are congruent, then the angles that are supplementary to congruent angles are also congruent. So there's two ways of looking at that. I hope one of at least those two stuck with you. So angle BAD is the same as angle ABC, also 125 degrees. Um, when I look at what's angle ADC, ADC, um, I have to see, oh, well, look, this angle and this angle are supplementary. So if this is 125, what's supplementary to 125? 55 degrees. So there you go. ADC is 55 degrees. And I want to know what is measure ABD. A, 
be D. Well, here I have this triangle. I know this is 125. I know that this is 55. I know that this is 30, which makes this 25. You following this okay? So 125, 25 means that so far this triangle's interior angles add up to 150. So I need to get 30 as the missing part of that triangle's interior angles. Or you could say, hey, look, I've got two parallel lines. I've got a line cutting them as a transversal. Alternate interior angles, they have to be the same. That might be easier for you. However you want to look at it, uh, ABD is 30 degrees. Okay, um, that is it for these examples. Let's move on to kites. Oh, just kidding, silly me. Before we move on to kites, let's do one more thing with trapezoids. Trapezoid mid-segment theorem. Um, remember mid-segments of triangles where you connect the midpoints of the legs of a triangle and you get a line that's parallel to the opposite side and half of its length. Similarly, if you do a mid-segment on a trapezoid and you find the midpoint of this leg, which is point P, and the midpoint of this leg, which is point Q, and you connect P and Q, you have a mid-segment to this trapezoid. And interestingly, it's also parallel. I know that's not surprising. It's parallel to these bases. And if it were a triangle, we'd say it's half as long as the base that it's parallel to. But here, we find out that it is, in fact, the average of the two bases. So however long AB is and however long DC is, PQ is half of that. So the theorem is that the mid-segment of a trapezoid is parallel to the bases and its length is the average of the lengths of the bases. Okay, now we get to talk about kites. A kite is not just a fun paper object held apart by some, some sticks and on the end of a string defying physics. It is in fact a geometric shape. And we call this shape a kite because, well, it looks like a kite. I know, I know, it's amazing. So in a kite, exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So if you look at this angle, and this angle, they're congruent. If you look at this angle and this one, no, not congruent. So in a parallelogram, all opposite sides are congruent. In a kite, only one pair of opposite angles are congruent, okay? And so that is the definition of a kite. When they're naming these geometric shapes, they really went to town looking at this geometric shape and thinking of the kid's toy. So in a kite, the line that goes across between the two congruent opposite sides. That's called the crossbar, because if that were a kite, that would be a crossbar. So there you go. Is a segment that connects the congruent vertical uh, vertices, okay? Um, and so we also know about a kite, just like a rhombus, but not a parallelogram, that the diagonals of a kite intersect at a right angle. They are perpendicular to each other. If I draw this diagonal and I draw this diagonal, I meet at a 90 degree angle. That'll be helpful, helpful to have in your toolkit um, down the road here. Uh, another theorem about kites is that the axis of symmetry bisects, bisects the crossbar and the two non-congruent angles of a kite. Here's the congruent angles of a kite. Here's the crossbar. This is the axis of symmetry. If you fold a kite in half this way, you don't have two equal portions. If you fold a kite in half this way, you have two equal portions. So this is the axis of symmetry. And it bisects these two angles, the non-congruent angles, it bisects them, and it bisects the crossbar, okay? So IX and EX would be congruent, um, and IKX and EKX would be congruent, okay? That's what this means. So let's find some missing parts. Uh, the kite, kite, hey, that's cute. If angle XKE is 55 degrees, XK, E, that's 55 degrees, and KI uh -huh, is less than KE. Oh, okay, there you go. Let's look for the measure of angle KTE. Let's find that, shall we? Well, it is going to also be 55 degrees. Why is that? I'm going to pause the video and give you a chance to think about it. You pause the video. I'm going to pause the video. It doesn't really matter if I pause it. You pause the video. Think about why. Did you figure it out? Well, if you have a kite, that means that these sides are congruent, which means if I cover up all of this, I've got an isosceles triangle. And so whatever this angle is, this angle is the same because it's an isosceles triangle. Did you get that? I hope you did. Let's look at measure of angle T, K, 
K, sorry, T, X, E, T, X, E. Well, this is the intersection of two diagonals, which we know in a kite, intersection of two diagonals is always 90 degrees because they intersect at a perpendicular. Let's look at one more. Angle K, E, X. Ooh, now I've got to think. This was 55. This is 90. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. And so 90 plus 55 is 145. What's the supplement of 145? The answer is 35 degrees. So because this is a triangle, I know this one, I know this one, I can find that, right? So that would be 35 degrees. Hope you followed that. If you don't, we'll go through it again tomorrow. All right, folks, that's all she wrote. If you have any questions, let me know tomorrow when I see you, or you can put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. See you tomorrow. Good night.